I'm going to make a correction so that we're in the right spirit of our celebration. I will ask you now to kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Yes. yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, we're, at this point, you're going to notice that the deacon kneels. There was a very long argument in the early church over what is the instant at which the gifts cease to be bread and wine and become the body and blood of Christ. The Eastern Rite claimed it was at the point where the presider called down the Holy Spirit, called the Epiclesis. The Western Church says, no, 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 it's when the words of institution are stated. And they argued back and forth for nearly 250 years. They eventually came to the conclusion, this isn't a magic act to start with. There is no instant. It's a process that takes place that begins with the Epiclesis and ends with the words of institution. And so out of respect for that process, the deacon kneels at the moment the epiclesis begins. Now, for those of you who were confirmed this past Easter, Easter vigil, you, you will remember that when you were called forward, I put my hands on your head. I said nothing, but I placed my hands on your head. This is to signify the calling down of the Holy Spirit upon you and in our celebration tonight, the calling down of the Holy Spirit upon your offering, the bread and the wine. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought before you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. And now we begin the consecration. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice filled with wine. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. This is very important, this moment, because our sacrifice is no longer bread or wine. No longer would you, in a very special way, have placed on this altar. It is now the body and blood of Christ. One thing I would encourage you to do, if you remember the Gospel of last Sunday, when Jesus presented himself to Thomas and said, Thomas, Place your fingers in the nail prints in my hand. Place your hand in my side. No longer continue to, uh, to, to disbelieve, but believe. And what was Thomas's words? 
my Lord and my God. As the consecrated red, the body of Christ, and the blood of Christ are elevated, I would like to encourage you to say those words at the elevation. Why? Because it reinforces in your own mind what we have now. It's not bread and wine. It's the body and blood of Christ. 